Hi there. OK, here we go. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Augmented Reality, the future of this hands-free world panel. Um, as, uh, as mentioned, my name is Tom Emmerich, and I'm the co-founder of Wearable App Review, which is the very first app review for wearable devices. We rate and review apps for uh, smartwatches, smart glasses, and fitness trackers. And I'm also a Canadian journalist writing on the Internet of Things, 3D printing, and wearables. And as you can see from what I'm wearing, I feel like I'm getting a lot of feedback, so I apologize. Um, I uh, have been a Google Glass Explorer for about one year now. Um, the augmented reality and virtual reality space is uh, exploding. In fact, I read a recent report this week that says that this market is expected to grow to over $1 billion by 2018, and that's just for dedicated AR and VR systems. So this panel, we're going to talk about um, the capabilities of augmented reality as they pertain to smart glasses, and then move in to have a deeper conversation around the impact this new reality will have on our everyday lives. And we really couldn't have a better panel than the gentlemen that are to my left. Um, uh, Dan Kui is the VP of Business Development for Vuzix Corporation, who uh, currently manufactures and sells the only commercially available Android smart glasses on the market, the M100. Uh, prior to joining Vuzix, uh, Dan and his team at MyViewCorp was responsible for designing and developing the world's first Android-enabled smart glasses, of which their patents were eventually sold to Google for use with Google Glass. Uh, beside him is Dave Slocum. He's the VP of product at Race Yourself, a fitness gaming startup that uses AR to make working out using smart glasses more immersive and motivating. And then finally, we have Andy Gestal, the CMO of Wikitude, a pioneer and one of the leaders in augmented reality software solutions. Wikitude actually just recently launched an optimized version of its augmented reality SDK for Google Glass, Epson Moverio BT200, and Vuzix M100. So let's get started. Um, Andy, actually, the term augmented reality has been thrown around in the smartphone space for quite a number of years. And now we're starting to hear it in the wearable space with smart glasses. So is augmented reality simply just a notification that pops up in my glasses? Or is it more? How would, how would you define augmented reality? Okay, sure. Well, augmented reality, uh, in a, you know, from our point of view at Wikitude, is obviously something that is uh, truly immersive, uh, where you have the reality you know, around you and you're augmenting it with computer-generated content to create a whole new experience. But of course, you know, I'm wearing Google Glass, and this is, uh, you know, at this stage, more of a uh, notification device. You, know, you have a little screen uh, up on, on top of your eye that can you know, prompt you, uh, like I said, notifications. Um, and can, in that way, you know, if you really uh, expand, you know, the term uh, augmented reality, also be, uh, you know, uh, interpreted as augmented reality because it does, you know, uh, give you information um, that will help you understand your your surroundings better. So, the term augmented reality goes from, you know, has a very wide spectrum um, from notifications all the way to a, you know, a true uh, fully immersive, um, you know, see-through experience with, you know, three-dimensional content and, and what have you. So it goes from here to there, and I think everything uh, in between can be considered augmented reality. And this is only the beginning, so, um, you know, I, I, I do not want to say, you know, this is augmented reality and this is not because it's all good, because it's, it helps us to promote um, the whole concept as a whole. Okay, okay. And we've seen a lot of augmented reality used in movies, yeah. right? Please, please um, with the current smart glass technology, Dan, that's on the market, like Vuzix M100, are we there yet? Or where are we right now with, with augmented reality and smart glasses? Well, you know, it's funny because uh, augmented reality in a, in its, in a term itself is, has actually been around for a long time. And we're just now seeing that the hardware and everything is catching up to the point where we can put augmented reality and, uh, in, in front of everybody and make it useful for people. And just like what Andy was saying, augmented reality is sort of a nebulous term. Everybody, you know, especially consumers, when they, when they hear the term augmented reality, which is sort of a geeky term for it, which I think we need to come up with something different. But when you hear that term, you know, you think about, oh, it's like the movies. I want to see, you know, this is Ender's Game. I've got all this <laughs> stuff and I'm going like this. But what people need to really realize, and, and the reality in augmented reality, is that 
Today, little tiny things in your daily, daily life, those mundane tasks, all those things that are repetitive, can be handled very effectively by, by using augmented reality. And this is what we at Vuzix are selling into the enterprise industrial medical spaces. We're going there, we're talking to industry people, and we're showing them how these common everyday tasks, when augmented reality takes care of those issues for them, how they can become more productive and make more money. Right. Can you give us an example of something on the enterprise that we would be able to relate to from an augmented reality perspective? Sure. I mean, one of the best, best things there is, you know, big box. You walk into a retail store, you know, and you walk up to a, a sales clerk and you go, gee, you know, I, I'm thinking about this curved screen TV thing over here. What is it? And they don't know. And then it takes 10 people to give you an answer. So imagine they're wearing something that's communicating with, with their, their system. And they can go, oh, it's curved screen, it's 4K uh, television, it has this resolution, and it's giving you all these sort of things. And oh, by the way, it comes in this color, and it's available, and it's in stock, and if you give me your credit card right now that I can scan, it'll be waiting for you out in front, and we'll load it up in your car. Right. So, but augmented reality, like what you just described, could be done on a smartphone. So what, what really makes it so powerful now that it's up here at my natural eye line of sight? The majority, the common factor, and most of the industrial people in the medical and, and all those spaces that we talk to, there are two common factors that come into play every time. Um, they're all common across all, all, the, all the industries. Safety is the big one, hands-free use, instead of walking around with a cell phone or your tablet or this sort of thing. And the second one is peer-to-peer -peer communications in real time. Okay, okay. And what are some of the limitations right now with the technology that's out? So for, let's say, a day with Google Glass, like how far can we go with augmented reality? What are some of the limitations that this technology, as it is today, um, we need to consider when we're building apps for Glass, for example? Well, I, I mean, I, just to hark back to the point you were talking about, the, you know, the benefits of wearable technology today, it's all about the aggregation of marginal gains. The, um, every small step we take, the way we pick out our phone, or we have to go to a PC and we check the information that we need at a time to complete a task, if it's there in front of our eye line and it's assisting us during the activity, then we are better at what we do. And actually, there's a really nice quote from uh, David Brailsford. He runs the British cycling team. And actually, his, uh, he has a team called the Secret Squirrel Club. And essentially, their goal is to shave off 1% from everything around the cyclist. Mm. So 1% improvement on the tires, 1% on the frame, 1% on the diet of the cyclist. All of that put together is a large gain. And that creates a gold medal winning versus bronze medal winning. And it's the same thing with wearable technology. If we're shaving off seconds uh, to getting that data that we need at that moment to complete a task, we are better than the other people that do not have it. Right? So see. it's literally, there, there is, a, is a kind of social gap being created by wearable technology. I think that's the, the new exciting kind of emerging space that we've got there. Okay. And is it always about an information bonus or value add in terms of an in, in informative perspective? Andy, like is it always, is it, are we gonna be walking around and, and seeing uh, a litter of data points around every single thing that we encounter on our regular life when we wear these things? What, what do you see? Um, it, it, you know, I think it totally depends. Yes, we will see these things, okay. um, but we will not only see these things. We will see a whole, you know, uh, a range of uh, different uh, use cases and applications. So I think what you're describing is, is something like in the context of traveling, like you're arriving in London, and wouldn't it be great if you had a uh, you know lonely planet uh, you know city guide on your on your glasses so that you would know your way around and you would be you know uh, you, you could learn more about the stuff that's uh, you know that you're walking by and the sites and what have you. But travel is only one vertical. I mean, there's you know, tons of other verticals um, that have tremendous opportunity here, um, which is. Uh, of course, gaming is a big one, but um, you know, enterprise is actually the, the area where we see the most uh, interest coming from at the moment, and you know, that's just a natural um, cycle, I think, because of the you know the uh, you know the, the the early stage that this industry is in, um, and this you know ties into the next limitation. Since we're talking about limitations, also is you know there's simply not enough uh, devices in the market yet um, that would um, you know, show us what all this technology can do. I mean, I'm so happy that 
you know, Dan was, uh, you know, telling me um, uh, earlier this year that the devices are finally there and can be bought. So, you know, the <laughs> M100 is, uh, is, is up for grabs now. But you know, we, we all know that um, Google Glass, for example, is limited to, you know, a few, um, uh, I think 10,000, 20,000 explorers worldwide at the moment. Um, you know, Epson is coming out with, uh, you know, with their BT200, I think next month or maybe in May. So it's very early uh, stages and a lot of uh, experimentation still has to be done to really answer that question, you know, properly as to, you know, where we see things going because there's still a few parts missing that will enable us to really tell what's to come. Yeah, for sure. Just to expand on a point that Annie just made. Um, one of the critical needs in this business as it grows and for the health of the industry is that more context sensitive types of information needs to be provided. And the best example I can give you is you know, people come up to you and ask you about wearable technology. They say, can I view my whole document or my schematic or whatever it is on my, on my wearable device? And, and you go, well, yes, you can, but it'd be more effective if that the people who are creating these apps and the people who own the back end, the big databases, SAP, Oracle, IBM, all those guys, create um, information that has been dropped down to a level that's consumable by the person who's using it. If I can't consume it effectively and quickly when I'm sitting here wearing my wearable device, then it's, a, it's no value to me. So that, that needs to change in the industry. I see, and you see that changing, is that, is that a direction yes. that we're headed? Or? absolutely, it's okay. happening now. Okay, yes. but is, uh, Dave, is the average person ready for augmented reality? Let's even say we even have this context, right, which uh, Dan says is the key. So we're, we're not just getting bombarded with every single notification or all pieces of information, but it's that nice future where we're getting what we need. Are we, are we ready for it? Are we ready to live in a new reality on a regular basis? Well, we had this moment when uh, it was unusual when you saw a chap walking down the street holding a cell phone talking to it. You know, they were pointed at, they were, they were strangers from the future. Um, who were these people that needed to make a telephone call so desperately in the street? Um, that was just 20 years ago. And now, you know, people are filming now, they're, they're browsing the web on their mobile devices. Um, and I think, you know, when it comes to the adoption of wearable technology, in the way that form factors are today, we see quite a lot of fragmentation and, and, and new emerging technologies just coming to the fore to make things possible, mm. that we'll find a few verticals where consumers find real value. Right. Um, obviously, I believe fitness is one. Um, I think having that kind of fitness information when you're training, when you're cycling or running, uh, assisting you with your goals, uh, inspiring you to complete your goal during your activity is a really killer use case for wearables, mm. whether it be smartwatch or smart glasses. Um, there are others in medical as well. Uh, I think that's another killer use case. I've definitely in the B2B space, there's already some amazing use cases out there um, from, you know, uh, particularly on the sales floor and retail, um, to, you know, kind of industrial um, uh, order picking and those kind of things. Okay. So I, I think on the consumer side, fitness is definitely a very strong space. So, you, so if I was going to the gym and, and I was given a Google Glass, you, you yeah. see this as like an, an everyday thing? Or if yeah. I would just go to the gym with my Google Glass? So literally, we have a tread... So Life Fitness, they're right. one of the largest providers in the U.S. of, of fitness equipment. So we have uh, the Race Yourself app working with the Life Fitness gym equipment. So, you, you know, you might jog down to the gym, uh, walk in there, and you've got your, your spin class, uh, your, your glass will just automatically connect with Bluetooth, and then you're racing in a big game with everybody else in the room. And you can have the kind of glass class where right. everybody's uh, training against each other. That's not me speaking, no. is it? No. <laughs> Getting a bit of oil. That was the glass That's, class. So, that was your sound effects. That was my sound effects, yeah. That was my spinning. Yeah. Um, that was the mouse on the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so right now you can connect with Bluetooth, no, Bluetooth low power in, in fitness equipment means you can be able to hook up dead easy to your, your um, spin, your um, turbo trainer, your uh, you know, treadmill, and have that kind of data in the glass and, and play um, kind of games while you're working out. Right. right now, people stare at a TV while they're using a treadmill. Hey, we can make that a more interactive and more fun. Right, right. And Dan, so with the M100, are you finding that when people put it on and they, they, they are able to experience this augmented reality, mm -hmm. that uh, are they fearful? Are they curious? What's the reaction that you're getting? No, I mean, actually, many of the people that we're dealing with, because uh, we focus primarily on the, on the B2B industrial markets, medical markets, there, there's no fear there. I mean, many of these people have been using wearable technology for years now. Mm -hmm. I mean, doctors have been using video glasses, for instance, 
uh, for many years, um, and there's actually a few studies out there. One neurosurgeon uh, says that the video glasses helped him shave four hours off a nine-hour surgery using, using uh, the, the video glasses, that sort of thing. So we don't have that fear factor, and we don't have a missionary sell to those people. It's the consumer side that you have to look at and say, okay, how do we get people over the hump? And um, initially, when we first created the, the first Android wearable device, we had actually conversations and, and some agreements with uh, NASCAR, the NFL, the PGA, uh, where consumers could come in, they could try it in a venue where there's content and everything that's created and being digested and used. Mm. And so they walk away with a very uh, extraordinary experience that they wouldn't have had before. And so when they come out of that venue, they go, where can I get one? Right. So that's, that's the sort of motivating factor I'm, I'm still looking for on the consumer side that helps us as a technology company and a hardware company push our devices into that space faster. I see. And so why is augmented reality excelling so well in sectors like enterprise and medical? But on the consumer side, we're seeing some hesitancy on the smart glass. Is it, is it because of a value proposition? Is it because, as you mentioned, they, these people were already used to using it in their job? Um, is it because maybe they, it's not seen as a life device, so they just put it on and then they take it off, so it's more of a tool? What are the reasons here? Well, I, I think there's two reasons. Um, one is vanity. Okay. And, and, and two is a <laughs> You don't think I look good? Up. No, you know, it, it's not that at all. But ask yourself this. How come Bluetooth headsets have never so, sold as well as what the industry predicted they would? But the wires that come up to your ear now you can go to a store and find shelves and shelves of those. They sell them like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. And now over-the-head headphones are very popular. But the Bluetooth have, have never made it to that, to that level. And the reason for that is because of vanity. People are used to looking at themselves in a way that they want to project to, uh, to another person as being attractive or mm -hmm. pleasing and so forth. So you've got to look at that when you consider the consumer space. The next is the killer app. What is the app that's going to drive these people, like the cell phone ended up doing, to using it on a daily basis that improves their lives in a way that they feel, yes, I'm going to wear something. Right. Okay. So that's, in my, my opinion, those are the two, two areas. Okay. Okay. And, and once we get that killer app, let's talk on the consumer side, but even on enterprise, um, once we get that killer app, are we going to find that augmented reality is a new type of addiction? Like, why would we ever want to take our glasses off if augmented reality is more useful, more fun, more engaging than our everyday life? You should ask that to you guys, because okay. you're on yeah. Google Glass. I can take mine off when I put yeah. them on whenever I want. So, so <laughs> we, we, we test every single day. We're, we're doing running applications, so we get half the team run out the door in the morning, uh, and we're, we're testing the latest build of the app, and we're running down the street trying these things out. 40 minutes later, we're, we're, we're sort of slowed down to a walk because we've been playing games for 40 minutes and we're actually kind of exhausted. And we kind of <laughs> forgot, oh, we're running and talking and trying out these apps. And yes, you get it sucked into this reality. In fact, I think for us, you know, that's one of the challenges we're coming across is that uh, having a, a compelling kind of 3D display in front of you can actually be quite a draw from the actual reality, right. which, which obviously you need to be careful of because it's real and you can bump into it. And right. Like that. right. So, you know, actually, I completely believe that. And especially, I was recently at a hackathon at uh, um, IC Hack, and, you know, they were building with the kind of Oculus Rift. You know, you put this on and you could imagine just losing days in there. Um, <laughs> just not coming out, not, no day, no night. <laughs> Just, you know, maybe if someone bring you something, put it in your mouth, just keep playing. Right. Um, that, that's a reality. That's going to be coming. Right. In my point of view. Yeah. Right. Yeah, actually, I read an article about how we will need robots to do our jobs because we'll be stuck in a virtual reality. Yeah. And then in the virtual reality, we will have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so is, so yeah. I don't know if that's yeah. the new reality, but that's what I bet There's possibly could be. That, you know. <laughs> There's a movie about that, and that's called Real Life in 10 years. Yeah. Andy, what's your thoughts on that? Is this, an, is this yeah. an addiction? I, it, it, I think it can definitely become an addiction. Um, I mean, to, to some extent, we're all you know, technology uh, enthusiasts, and we're somewhat addicted to these kinds of things. You know, I've been wearing obviously, you know, this thing uh, for for quite some time, and um, also the you know the Epson device, and also the uh, the Vuzix uh, M100, and um, you know, I think um, you know it really depends also on on the content that's provided to you, the kind of apps that you can experience. I mean, at the moment, you know, the the, the number of apps and the quality of apps is very very limited. But once we get over that, and once you know we have all these great uh, use cases and applications out there that we can you know quickly download, just like we're doing on smartphones uh, today, 
I think then it can really, you know, uh, capture you for 24 hours a day. Uh, I mean, at, at the moment, I'm quite happy, you know, to, to take this off, you know, after a few hours. Um, and, you know, there's some ergonomics, uh, you know, ergonomic problems still. Battery life is a big issue. Um, so there's a number of things that, that, uh, that prevent you from wearing it, uh, uh, you know, 24 hours a day. Uh, you know, to, to the extent you're uh, describing, but um, I, I, I certainly see it going that way. Okay, okay. Well, our time's up already. That's how fast it goes in an augmented reality. Uh, thanks very much, and um, if you have any questions, come find us afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.